Hi. Okay, so if you watch my first video about me getting evicted, this is an update to that video. So if you haven't watched that video, I'm going to leave the link to that video under this one. So you can watch it and then you can watch this one because then if you watch it out of order, it's not going to make sense. Anyways, I'm safe. I ended up having to leave LA because I was emotionally unstable to stay there. Um, I really understand how that city can make you get to a point where you're at the end of the road where you find yourself on the street, on a corner, yelling at cars. And I feel like I was headed towards that way. Now, I don't believe in taking drugs. I've never taken drugs. I may have taken edibles, but I just took my first edibles like maybe last year. Um, I'm not a drinker. So I think that everything that I was going through was mentally making me go crazy. And I was going to break down if something didn't happen, if, if my friends didn't intervene the way they did. So one of my friends ended up finding out what was going on and my daughter called one of them and it was just a ripple effect. The next thing I knew, I was at the airport um, getting ready to leave LA. I don't know how long I'll be gone. I don't know what I'm doing still. Um, this video is being taken 24 hours after I landed. So... The day after I did that video, um, it was a Monday, so I ended up turning the keys into the leasing office. From there, I went to go meet up my daughter, which I thought I was going to get a motel with her. Um, but the program that was helping her get the hotel motel um, for five days was only going to help her. So she could not have anybody else in the room. And since I'm not able to get my own room, um, and I have been going off on faith and vibes since nothing was working for me, I end up going to my safe space. I'm not going to tell you what my safe space is, but it's a place where I've been to when I was homeless and I didn't have a car and I just went there um, just to feel kind of protected. Um, I, I knew that being on the street or sleeping on the street or trying to find that, that's not for me. I'm not built that way. So I, God told me to go to that same spot that I went to last time. I went there and I just stayed there and I tried to get some sleep. That didn't happen. I didn't get that much sleep. Um, I may have gotten maybe an hour or two of sleep, but it was just so much noise around that I couldn't really sleep the way I wanted to and I was just so afraid of someone attacking me or something like that because you know even though I was in a public place I just feel like people don't care give a damn anymore and they don't care and they'll attack you whether there's people around or not so um so I pretty much stayed in that safe space and I just was like waiting to hear from God I called one of my friends and told her what was going on and um, I told her I just felt like I was crazy. Like, I'm trying to listen to God. I'm trying to surrender and I'm trying to do the things he's telling me to do. But it just doesn't make sense. And then I feel like I'm going crazy. And she's like, no, you're not going crazy. Um, because one of the things I did tell her is, even though I feel like I'm listening to God and I'm surrendering and I'm doing the things that he's telling me to do, everything still works out and everything still has working out and the things that he told me not to do and I end up going to do it they didn't work out and the things that he told me to do and I did it always worked out so even up to talking to her things were still working out but it wasn't working out the way I wanted it to not the way I would have controlled it to have worked out and so we went through that and I told her everything that was happening and you know she's like you know 
one of the things that I kept saying was like, I don't understand why he's making me go through this again. I've already been through this three times. Why is he making me going through this a fourth time? And of course, she was like, well, it's because you missed something. Maybe there's something else you're supposed to learn. And so I said, okay, um, I figured it was listening. I have to listen. And not try to do what I feel is right to do. So I stayed in that safe space and um, I heard God tell me stay here until like 10 o'clock in the morning before you move, before you go anywhere. And so during that time, my friend sent me some money and um, it was enough money to get a couple of days of hope, of a motel and god told me just get it for one night and i'm like get it for one night what the? <sighs> okay so i ended up getting it actually let me tell you this i tried to get the motel for two nights and this particular motel said no you can't uh book nights together you have to book them one day at a time which was totally weird for me. And I I didn't think, I don't know, it was just weird. And so here I am trying to book it t for two nights, even though God told me to book it for one night, I didn't understand why it didn't let me. And I ended up submitting the booking, but because I, I was on a third party booking one of like Expedia or something. And I sent it and then Expedia, emailed me and said, sorry, we couldn't book you. Now you should be able to go book. And I was just like, what? So I didn't pay attention to it because I saw that it didn't take any money out of my account. So I ended up waiting at 10 o'clock to leave the space that I was in. And I ended up taking a bus and going directly to the hotel because I was like, well, trying to see if they were going to honor the price that I saw online versus the price that they were telling me over the phone. And when I got there, she was like, no, go go online and and uh, book it because I won't be able to give you that price that you see online. And I was like, oh, okay, well, I actually want it for two nights. And she was like, no, we don't do that here. You have to book each night separately, not together. So that point I would realize okay I really gotta listen to God because that just blew my mind once again every time that I just do something outside of what God told me to do I'm still surprised I'm still like wow I'm not crazy like this is really happening he is really speaking to me and I have to listen and now, mind you, this has happened several times. Like this past year, I've had these points where it's like, oh, and God is like telling me, I told you not to do that. I told you not to do that. I told you it wasn't going to work. So this is not my first time <laughs> that this has been happening. I could tell you a whole bunch of other times this past year that um, the God has told me not to do something and I went ahead and did it. And it was just like, okay, I'll give you another example. I was looking at the shared housing, even though I said I did not want to do shared housing. And I said, I'm not going to go there. I've had a bad experience. If I go back to shared housing, I'm going to go to jail. I just knew I was going to go to jail. And I ended up trying to go to shared housing, y'all. This is before um, going to the safe space that God told me to go to. On the way to the safe space, I said, you know what? The office is on the way. The shared housing office is on the way. So I'll just go stop by there and then I'll go to the safe space that God told me to go to. So y'all, I went all the way to that office <laughs> and it was closed. Nowhere on their website said that they were going to be closed on Mondays. Once again, I heard God's voice said, I told you not to, to worry about that. I told you not to do that. You're not going to have to do that. So that two things right there. 
But I feel like these past year that thing, these things have been happening to me, it hasn't been as close to what it is now. Like in the past year, things have happened and I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. I shrug it off and I just keep on going. But now that I'm in a position where I have to listen and I can see what God is trying to tell me without any other distractions, it's like really mind blowing and it's really making me feel like, okay, I need to just really like let go and let God. And so I said, okay, after I saw that that place was closed, I ended up going to the safe space. Okay, now so fast forward, the lady done told me that they don't, you know, book two nights in a row. Um, I got the room. She said it wasn't going to be ready until a couple hours. I was like, okay. So I went um, down the street and I was on the phone. I had to call one of the um, case workers that I have. And I ended up going back, getting the room. Luckily, I asked the heifer. I said, is it a fee for me to get into the room earlier? Because I know some of these motels, they know when they know you're homeless or you're in a situation, they try to nickel and dime you for everything. And she's like, oh, yeah, I was going to charge you, but I'll waive it because, you know, you're supposed to get, um, because I was getting into the room at one o'clock in the afternoon instead of three o'clock, she was supposed to charge me $25 per hour that I'm going to be going into the room. So since I started... Uh, since I, I went into the room at one o'clock, she was supposed to charge me $25 for one o'clock and $25 for two o'clock. So $50. She was, probably, she was supposed to charge me $50. I didn't even have. So thankfully I called her out on that and she waived it and she was like, don't worry about it. But then I looked at the sign that she pointed to. She's like, read the sign. You'll see everything that we charge for. Do you know they charge like $25 per hour that you want to stay after like you know how you do late um uh late checkout it's like the checkout is at 11 so it goes up to 2 p.m so every hour that you want to do a late checkout they charge you $25 I tell you being poor or being homeless is not for the week they charge you for everything and it's like people make more money off of poor people than they do rich people one day I'm going to tell y'all how that works but anyways so I end up getting in the room I um ended up leaving to go get something to eat up the street luckily it, it was around a whole bunch of restaurants um and then you know my food stamps is able to work at restaurants now so I was like okay got me something to eat went back to the motel uh took a shower ate my food and then I was trying to watch TV just to get my mind off and I ended up falling asleep. So I slept until like, I went to sleep around like eight o'clock at night. It was probably before eight o'clock. And then at nine o'clock the next morning, like 9.45, I set my alarm for 9.45 because I wanted to be able to get out and, you know, trying to listen to God and like, what is my next thing what what am I supposed to do um before this 11 o'clock because I didn't want to get another night at this hotel because God told me one night and around maybe seven eight o'clock my friend calls and she's like yeah I heard about your situation another friend calls so my one friend told the other friend hey call Max because something ain't right with her and so she called me. She's like, okay, um, you, you buy the airport because I want to send you a ticket so you can come where I'm at. And I'm just like, oh, I don't want to go there. I said I wasn't going to go there. And she was like, well, you don't have no choice. Come here. So I was like, okay. So I ended up getting on a plane. Well, actually getting to the airport. I had to wait. I was on standby, so I had to wait. Um, so the original plan was for me to get on an 11 o'clock p.m. flight and that didn't work out. So I had to sleep at the airport and wait for the next flight out. That was at 6, 15 in the morning. I didn't think I was going to get on there because most people do arrive at those early flights. So I had made a little friend there and we were like basically stranded at the airport together. 
and he was like, uh, you gonna wait for the next fight? I said, yeah. So he ended up sleeping around. We slept around each other, I guess, <laughs> at that point. And um, just hung out with each other, whatever. Not even really hung out. I wouldn't say hung out, but just like kept an eye out on with, uh, I felt like he was keeping an eye out on me. I felt that, but anyways. And so the 615 flight came up and I saw my name on the list and I'm just like, ain't no way I'm getting on this flight. So I was like bundled up and I was just like ready to not go. And then lo and behold, they called my name and I got on the flight and I had a connecting flight. And then I got to my destination where I am right now. Um, God is telling me to rest and relax. Don't try to go and do stuff like I normally do, because normally I would have came in, slept, and then I would have tried to find something to do, find a job or some money or try to hustle up something to make something happen. And God's like, no, don't do that. <laughs> and he brought me to the right place because I can't do any of the things I would normally do in LA. Um, like get up, leave, catch a bus and do whatever I need to do. I'm not able to do any of those things so God really was like no I need you to sit and surrender and that's what I'm doing so um I rested and I'm usually like not a good guess because I stay to myself when I'm at people's houses or staying over at someone's house I don't care if it's family or friends or whatever I don't care how well I know you I just try to stay out the way and so I started to think, oh, well, I'm in bed and I don't want this person to think that, you know, I'm in bed and I'm not trying to do anything. And I'm like, Max, give yourself some grace and patience. <laughs> You've been out in the street, like literally catching the bus, walking around just aimless, aimlessly. You got to give yourself a break. You only had one good night sleep out of five nights this is your second night out of this week that you're having a good night's sleep give yourself some grace and patience don't worry about that if that if my friend wouldn't be a friend if she would think that oh she's sleeping in the bed da, 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 da. no she knows my situation and she's very understanding and I just have to trust God that he put it on her heart to help me and to bring me out to where she's at so that I can have a safe place to stay and not go through any emotional roller coaster that I was going through. And it's very, very peaceful here um, where I was staying, where I live. You know, you can hear all kinds of things randomly. You'll hear gunshots. You'll hear fireworks. You'll hear dog, dogs barking. You'll he hear street vendors yelling out stuff. You'll hear ice cream truck. You'll hear just people talking and kids laughing and screaming outside. I just like, it's a constant thing that you always would hear. And where I'm at, I barely hear anything. I hear birds chirping. <laughs> um, but I can dig it and I can appreciate it. And it's not the life that I want every day, but it is something that I do need. I did need to just step away from LA and just have some peace and I know that I'm going to be okay and I know I'm going to be okay because I'm listening to God and it doesn't matter if I think other people think I'm going crazy or doing this thing that I'm doing as far as surrendering and listening to him and I've come to another realization that I do live in reality and that what my ex or anybody has ever said to me that I don't live in reality, I know I do. And, and I just have to continue to believe in myself and believe in God and trust myself and trust God. And that's all that matters. So that's where I'm at. I'm safe. And I'm just going to continue um, documenting my journey and letting you guys know what's going on so that you can see it. Because I feel at the end of this, 
as this season is over, I feel like this is my season finale, <laughs> that all things will be good. That everything that's happening to me is working for my good. And that one of my songs that I used to love on my praise and worship, she says, I'm getting ready to sing something I've never seen. Something like that. I'm not I have a good voice or whatever. But I feel like I'm going to get ready to sing. And when my blessings do come, I know I deserved it. And just know that I deserve it. <laughs> so I'm going to end this video. Um, thank you for watching. And I'm ready to see what the next video is going to be about. Because I watched my video, previous video, and I was looking at myself and I was like, oh, dang, I was looking rough, man. And now I'm just like, wow, you can, I can feel the peace in my life right now. And although less than 24 hours ago, I was in complete chaos and things just looked really weird and looked really bad for me. And now I'm in a totally different space and quiet place. So I know God is real and he's showing me that he can make things happen overnight. So that's where I'm at. So like, comment, and <laughs> subscribe now that I'm in a better space and place. So yeah. All right. So I'll see you on the next video. Bye.